Hello, I'm Ted Sussman. I'm here to present Advancing GRMS Technology by Assessing Emerging Failures. GRMS technology is gauge restraint measurement system technology that uses a gauge spreading load to identify locations at risk for wide gauge derailments. I work at the Volpe Center and at the University of Hartford. My co-authors are Radim Bruza Kavensko and Hugh Thompson of the Federal Railroad Administration. Gauge strength of track is a leading cause of failure when it becomes too low and wide gauge is allowed to occur that can result in a wheel drop derailment. Causes of this type of failure are generally tie and fastener deterioration. To measure track response to gauge split spreading loads, a deployable split axle has been mounted on our T18 test vehicle. This split axle deploys and the picture is shown in the upright pos up position during testing will be deployed down onto track. A vertical load would be applied and a lateral gauge spreading load would be applied during testing. Measurements made under those load conditions are unloaded gauge away from the deployable axle and loaded gauge near the deployable axle. Critical gauge is typically 59 inches where the back of a wheel set dimension lines with the inside flange thickness. At that dimension of gauge, a wheel drop derailment is potentially likely. The deployable axle of the GRMS is mounted on a frame that follows the track as the vehicle traverses over the territory. The frame is designed to maintain an elevator V of 0.7 at nominal lateral force of 14 kips, vertical force of 21 kips. Those actual lateral and vertical forces can change as the uh, gauge changes or as the profile of the track changes. However, the system works to maintain an L over V of 0 0.7. And during testing, the actual forces are measured. The result of the test is a measure of the loaded and unloaded gauges that develop can be used to identify the change in gauge and that change in gauge is the main parameter that goes into the gauge widening projection parameter and projected loaded gauge parameter. Gauge widening projection is an indicator of deteriorated tie fastener system strength measured as an extrapolated gauge change under a critical load from unloaded to loaded. Projected loaded gauge is an indicator of the widest gauge that could occur under critical lateral, vertical, lateral and vertical load combinations. In the picture shown in the figure, we have a, a site with a GWP of 0 0.45 and concrete tie track. We have a few center crack ties, some um, fastening um, deterioration, some intact ties, and you can see the trend in the data there that this, this zone is weaker than, than the adjacent surrounding track identifying these, these conditions. The track behavior and gauge strength testing results from a combination of the vertical load that is applied to seat the rail and the lateral load that is applied to displace the rail and test the gauge strength. Lateral rail movement under this loading condition is either translation, which is a horizontal movement of the rail relative to the tie to develop the change in gauge that is measured by the GRMS system, or roll, which can occur under these load situations or where the tie rail interface is not uniform. Commonly, a combination of roll and translation is measured in this test. Because rail roll and translation indicate different behaviors, rail cant becomes a critical measure to assess the movement of the rail and the mode of deformation. In the GRMS test, Rail cant is measured both loaded and unloaded. While the GRMS was developed to address risks associated with wide gauge derailments, which remain a leading cause of, of derailments, several different types of failures at the rail tie interface have emerged since the GRMS was developed and have been a focus of, of interest to identify as they have emerged. 
One of the main, main modes is tie structural failure, shown in the upper right figure, where we have a, a cracked and split um, concrete tie. In addition to concrete tie failure, wood tie failure, center cracked or, or other types of tie failure would also be um, subject of interest to this type of research. In addition, uneven tie support to the rail, such as plate cutting and rail seat abrasion, have been a subject of interest. Just to add a little bit more detail to that uh, rail support deterioration topic brought up in the last slide. Um, the deterioration of rail seat, especially on concrete ties known as rail seat deterioration, has emerged as a risk contributing to, to wide gauge over the last few decades. As this risk emerged, thoughts about how to detect this risk have, have been prevalent in, in some research over that time, and it led to the installation of rail profile systems in both a loaded and unloaded position to assess change in rail can on the GRMS vehicle. The data became suitable for assessing the mode of rail deflection as either roll or translation. In translation, and beyond just identifying rail seat deterioration, is, is good in identifying places where the wood tie track is either just weak or, or plate cut. In addition to changes in rail cant, research on the measurement of the position of the rail base relative to the tie surface had, had been pursued in the GRMS test in order to assess if the rail or tie plate is wearing into the tie. But these measurements have met with somewhat limited success and do not provide the same level of detail that this change in rail cant can provide. Rail cant is useful in identifying locations of rail seat deterioration as shown on the left-hand figure with a 132 pound rail in its design position in black and in its loaded position in red. A uh, simple measurement of rail cant will identify this, this, this deterioration and identify the, the location. In these locations circled in, in these conditions circled in, in red, the unloaded and loaded position of the rail can be detected rail cant alone. So just uh, providing a vertical load seats the rail adequately to identify the zone. In conditions where the rail seat deterioration does not extend across the full width of the, of the rail seat, that vertical load may not seat the rail and would require a lateral load to identify the location since the can't would not pick up this zone without the applied lateral load to seat the rail, even with that gap. In these conditions, we need to, to roll the rail and, and measure the can't loaded to The measurement of rail support deterioration and rail seat deterioration is, is a challenge. On the left figure, the whole seat rail seat deterioration condition can be identified when a vertical load is applied and rail cant is measured. In the right, the partial rail seat deterioration requires a lateral load to seat the rail in the loaded position and loaded and unloaded cant measurements to identify the change in rail roll from unloaded to loaded to identify these particular locations. The GRMS technology is particularly suited to provide that consistent lateral load. The flexible loading scenarios allow uh, changes in the L over V ratio needed to, to seat the rail in, in certain conditions and provide a measurement of partial rail seat deterioration. These rail roll measurements are, are really the, the best way to identify the partial rail seat deterioration and, and identify those challenging field conditions. Currently, research is underway to identify locations with poor track support, deteriorated track support conditions that can lead to a gap between the tie bottom and the ballast. In these locations, either loss of height of the, the tie due to abrasion or, or settlement of the ballast or deterioration of the ballast can create a gap. That additional deflection from that gap under as a train passes or as the GRMS test goes by can concentrate high loads on the edges or corners of the rail seat or the, 
or the tie bottom. To measure these locations and identify locations at risk for these types of issues, current efforts are focused on a measurement of track deflection as the GRMS tests. So we can compare loaded versus un unloaded track geometry, identify locations of, of settlement or, or potential tie ballast gaps, or even rail tie gaps that could lead to excessive deterioration and risk of wide gauge derailment or other types of failures. Emerging risks associated with tie stability and ballast support are also being investigated. The support conditions of the tie directly impact the tie performance under load, along with its longevity and safety. Measurements of tie support include the tie deflected shape to identify the ballast support conditions and tie rotations, where in zones of variable track support, rail seat load can be concentrated on tie edge and potentially inducing rail rotation as measured by some researchers. If rail rotation is allowed to occur in these locations, then wearing of the edges of the bottom of the tie can ultimately lead to rounding of the tie bottom in extreme cases, making the tie unstable on the ballast platform. Finally, in recent years, all this research to identify safety conditions and critical locations and tracks subject to deteriorated rail tie fastening systems and, and tie conditions are also being applied to development projects and public-private partnerships where track upgrades are planned. In this image, we see some GRMS data that has been used and mapped in Google Earth using a KML file to visualize tie distribution requirements in a tie renewal project. The GWP gauge widening projection data that is probably the, the single best indicator of the rail tie interface deterioration is used to create this plot. The plot was developed with uh, knowledge of the number of ties budgeted for this project and the threshold of 0 0.5 inches for the GWP was set to distribute that number of ties along the track according to the weakest zones. In the red zones, eight or more consecutive ties in a row were identified. Yellow, four to eight consecutive ties exceeding this threshold were identified and in green, only two to three ties. In the red zones, the longer stretches are certainly longer than, than eight ties. So in that zone, multiple zones of longer than eight ties exceeding that limit were identified, indicating that um, a longer stretch and more ties would be required. The tie count was developed based on this data provided to the managers of the project and the railroad. And the data was reviewed with the track inspector and help the track inspector to justify some weak locations where knowledge of weak track locations at the track inspector level were known, but that knowledge did not lead to allocation of the appropriate resources in those spots. In those locations, this data helped to justify the additional ties in certain areas instead of having a more uniform distribution throughout the length of the track. The gauge restraint measurement system was developed to identify locations and track at risk for wide gauge derailment. In the time since its development, the technology has been applied to other types of failures where the gauge spreading load provided by the GRMS can be used to exercise the track and identify other risk to failure. The technology is available as a rail bound vehicle as shown in the previous slides or as a high rail vehicle from Holland Corporation. Should be kept in mind that GRMS is the only technology that provides a validated mechanistic evaluation of the track structure condition. The parameters that result from this test include the projected loaded gauge, which considers extreme vehicle track interaction loads for limiting con conditions of gauge spreading load and an extrapolated gauge widening that is used and measured against the critical track gauge of 59 inches.
Emerging visual electromagnetic techniques do not measure against the failure mechanism of a wide gauge derailment or even some of these other emerging types of derailments. And while these technologies can be quite useful in identifying risks, probably a calibration against a mechanistic system like a GRMS would be a good method to uh, avoid false positives. GRMS technology is flexible. The applied loads can be adjusted. It has a strong platform for measurement of some of the most challenging emerging failures that occur under some critical, critical loadings of lateral and vertical combinations that occur under deteriorated vehicles or under extreme conditions, operating conditions. And while the GRMS was developed over 30 years ago, the technology is just as relevant and the failure modes are just as critical as they ever have been. I'd like to thank you for your time today and have a great afternoon. In this slide, we have a few references to some of the research that was alluded to throughout the presentation. Thank you for your time.